Okay, it seems like I don't have a chat, but uh, maybe Oz, uh, uh, is there any activity in chat? Maybe somebody do not see presentation or something like this? No, I think it's okay now. Ah, okay. Um, so, uh, hello everyone, uh, I'm Nikita. It's uh, nice to have you on this uh, talk uh, about GraphQL APIs uh, from Backhunter's perspective. Uh, first of all, a few words about me. I'm a security researcher at Huawei. Uh, in the past, I was a full-time bug bounty hunter and also security analyst at Mellow Group. Also, where, when there is an opportunity, I'd like to share my knowledge uh, through conferences, articles, and basically any media that I can, can, can do. So uh, what we're going to talk about today, uh, I believe uh, this talk will be beneficial for every level. So if you are just a newcomer uh, for in GraphQL, so you haven't um, played with it, haven't, haven't get a chance to do it, uh, we will tell about what GraphQL is from very basics. Uh, then maybe if you know what GraphQL is or even <clears throat> had a chance to um, interact with it, but uh, didn't look for vulnerabilities, uh, maybe you will be interested in what vulnerabilities to look for in GraphQL and how to find them and what tools, tools uh, to use to find them. And also if you are more advanced, uh, GraphQL uh, hacker, uh, then maybe there will be something interesting for you too, because um, we'll look at what to do uh, in some challenging environments. For example, when introspection is disabled. So let's start with the basics. Uh, what is GraphQL? Uh, we can answer it in many different perspectives. But first, let's look at uh, where it fits in high level, in architecture. So GraphQL is server, uh, backend, and query language. And in architecture, it uh, is between uh, clients and some backend systems. Uh, backend system can be anything from database, uh, it can be microservice, or it can be even some third-party API. And GraphQL uh, hides all this complexity uh, behind itself and provides a single entry point for a client. Uh, it was like architectural overview. Now let's uh, look at how GraphQL uh, looks from uh, user's perspective, from hacker's perspective. So uh, for this, let's look at the demo. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you should see you should see GraphQL now. So basically, GraphQL it's like a Burp for HTTP, but GraphQL for uh, GraphQL. So on the left we have like uh, requests, um, and on the right we have response. And let's see it in action. Uh, first, uh, we will look at uh, query type of request. So there are three types, query, mutation, and subscription. First, we will look at query. Query uh, needs to, we need query to fetch the data from server. So basically in this tool, we can see what kind of data we can fetch uh, from particular GraphQL uh, server. And for example, let's fetch uh, some uh, data about a user. Uh, so we're like uh, getting a user with login as hacker one, getting its status and uh, status message. And as we can see uh, right now, status message is null, uh, meaning that there is like empty text. Okay, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was query. Now let's uh, look at uh, mutations. So 
mutations uh, first let me introduce mutations briefly mutations uh, need we need mutations to modify the data on the server so let's now try to modify our status uh, they have similar syntax where I type in keyword mutation and then like mutation name it's arguments uh, in this case it's a message where I set in message to hi OS and in response, we want to get this message back. And as we can see, we've successfully changed status message and we can go through the history and confirm it with a query. Um, so this is like uh, two basic operations. You will see them almost in every GraphQL. Uh, what is uh, less common is subscription, uh, which is like uh, kind of like WebSockets, but uh, built in GraphQL. And unfortunately, su subscriptions are not widely used. So we will just, we will not take a closer look at them. Um, another important concept, uh, aside from basic operations, is introspection. So uh, as you saw earlier, uh, when we type something in GraphQL, it uh, somehow knows uh, what fields uh, to suggest us and what arguments to suggest. And it knows it uh, not by some kind of magic, but by obtaining uh, GraphQL schema. And GraphQL schema is just a huge JSON file that uh, describes uh, what particular GraphQL API can do. Basically it's documentation, but this documentation can, can be read and understood by machines. So uh, to obtain introspection, oh, not introspection, sorry, uh, JSON schema, uh, we have to run introspection query. And basically it's uh, ordinary query, but it's just uh, doing request for some uh, internal field called dash uh, underscore underscore schema. So, uh, let's see how it looks in action. Okay, here is our request. Uh, response takes quite long because on the GitHub schema is big. And in response, we're getting a uh, like huge JSON file which contains all type information needed to like um, describe what can we do with this uh, API endpoints. So uh, this is basics of GraphQL. Uh, now you can like uh, interact, it, uh, interact with it from a perspective of user or even a hacker. And now let's ask ourselves, uh, why knowing, is knowing GraphQL important in the first place? Uh, I think it is important to know how GraphQL works and to test it because nowadays more and more companies use it. Uh, like two years ago, there were like three or four uh, big uh, companies that use it. Now it's almost every big company has some GraphQL endpoints. And so by uh, knowing how to interact with it and how to look for vulnerabilities in it, we can increase our attack surface and by increasing our attack surface, we're increasing chances to find vulnerabilities in our penetration tests or bug bounty efforts. So, and now uh, the questions for you. Uh, how do you think, uh, what is the most popular vulnerability type in GraphQL APIs? So uh, you can write it in the chat and uh, Oz, I think, uh, will help me to uh, get the answers. Uh, do we have some answers? I door, yeah, yeah, I, I see the chat. It's, it's like Q and A. Okay, I see IDOR injection, SQL injection, excessive data in response. Um, actually, uh, 
there are injections and authorization issues, but uh, yeah, the most common one is actually authorization. Uh, it's like eye doors, it's excessive data exposure and so on. Um, and this is uh, like statistic from my personal experience. And also, uh, as you can see here in the, in the bottom of the slide, if you will go to HackerOne and search for GraphQL, uh, almost every disclosed report uh, on HackerOne is about uh, authorization vulnerabilities. So basically it's uh, the most common one in GraphQL APIs. And how do we usually find such vulnerabilities? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have automatic solution. Uh, it's the case for GraphQL 2. Uh, and we have to do it manually. So uh, basically we're doing it like in REST APIs. Uh, we are gathering endpoints, we are gathering their input parameters, and then we're trying to play with these parameters and for example, supply uh, IDs from other users, uh, private documents and so on. Uh, but in GraphQL, instead of reading like human written documentation, uh, we have uh, JSON schema. And by itself, JSON schema is a very huge file and it's hard to understand, uh, but uh, we can use amazing tool called GraphQL Voyager. And basically what it does, it transforms the schema that you see on the left to the nice graph of objects and connections between them on the right. Uh, I will give a link to this tool uh, in the end. So like you don't have to uh, search it now uh, in the internet. And schema is uh, greatly helps us in uh, identifying uh, authorization vulnerabilities because the more endpoints in, or in terms of GraphQL, the more objects and fields we know, uh, the more probability for us to find vulnerability in some of these fields or endpoints. However, uh, nowadays uh, we sometimes face uh, an issue that introspection is disabled. So back then, like two or three years ago, uh, almost every GraphQL API was exposed. Like you can run introspection query and get the schema back. However, Nowadays, you can paste uh, some GraphQL API where you can pull uh, uh, request introspection, but get no schema back. For example, Apollo server uh, disables introspection by default in production environment. And what to do in such case? Uh, can we like increase our attack surface by obtaining schema in some other way? Uh, it turns out that uh, answer is yes, uh, because uh, of the tool that I like to present to you. It's an open, so an open source tool. You can find it on the link below. Uh, and this tool is called uh, Clairvoyance. And basically it allows you to obtain GraphQL API schema despite disabled introspection. So uh, let's take a look on how it works. Uh, we will have another demo. Okay, uh, so first we're starting a GraphQL server, uh, which we will be testing. And then we're starting our tool. It produces kind of a lot of output because we've just verbose mode. And now we're, um, we've uh, got the schema uh, without introspection. And now let's try to build the schema to graph in GraphQL Voyager. We are copy it, then paste to GraphQL Voyager. And ta-da, we have a schema. And basically it is uh, very similar to what you will get with introspection. Uh, the on, uh, there are a few things that cannot be retrieved by this tool. Like, uh, as you can see, there is no description on uh, uh, types and fields. Uh, however, like uh, 
type names and field names and field types and arguments uh, can be retrieved using this tool. And actually, I did this on two, or at least two GraphQL uh, APIs. Uh, now, uh, let's have a closer, closer look at how, how this tool works and why it is even possible to Mm, to retrieve this schema, uh, even without uh, even without introspection enabled. So the first thing uh, that uh, this is uh, all about uh, how Apollo Server and GraphQL JS libraries behave. It's not like a, a vulnerability or feature of GraphQL standard, it's uh, about implementation. And first feature of uh, uh, Apollo Server is that when you supply it uh, invalid uh, field, uh, which is similar to a valid field, it will give you a suggestion of a valid field or even several fields if uh, it is the case. So this is uh, one thing how we can obtain some data from GraphQL API. Uh, the other thing is that if you supply a valid field, uh, it will cause slightly different error message. So we can, uh, by this, by doing uh, this, uh, we can uh, differentiate between uh, valid fields and invalid fields, even without suggestions. Uh, also, the very nice uh, thing uh, about uh, Apollo Server that uh, even if we need arguments to the field, uh, we don't need it to get errors. For example, actually, uh, this uh, field film uh, requires uh, argument ID uh, for getting data, but uh, to get some error message, we do not need it. So we do not need to guess uh, IDs so, and so on. And we can just supply our fields uh, in the next selection set and get our suggestions, suggestions again. So this greatly helps us in like scaling up this uh, technique of suggestion and um, differentiating valid fields with invalid fields. Also, uh, the great thing that is helps us to speed up process of reversing schema uh, like 10 or uh, even 100 times is that we can supply multiple fields in uh, one document and it will return an error for each supplied field. And by doing this, for example, we can supply two fields, star and spice, and we will get suggestions for both fields. This allows us to probe like for thousands or even tens thousands of words per, per, per second, yeah, in a single thread. And if we will uh, have multiple threads, uh, we will uh, guess it much faster. Okay, so that's it uh, with the tool. If you will interested in trying it uh, in, by yourself, or maybe even doing some contributions like issues or pull requests, uh, you are welcome in repository. Uh, so, but now let's talk a little bit more about some tricks regarding vulner finding vulnerabilities in GraphQL APIs. Uh, the first trick uh, is to look at edges. Uh, as you remember, GraphQL have nodes, it's like our objects with fields and uh, connections between them, it's edges. Uh, but actually edges are not just connections, but we can have some data on edges too. And what developers often for forgot, they, they often for for forgot to forget to add uh, authorization checks on edges and it results in vulnerabilities. So it was the case for my private bug bounty experience. And uh, you can even find some public reports regarding uh, the same um, 
misconfiguration and vulnerability uh, on Hacker One Two. So uh, pay attention to edges as well as nodes. Also, uh, there is in some GraphQL libraries, particularly it's the case for uh, Ruby GraphQL library. Uh, in query, you might have uh, fields called node or nodes. And what this field uh, allows you to do is actually uh, fetch some object by ID. So like uh, any object in your GraphQL API, which has an ID can be fetched by this field. And this, uh, again, uh, led to uh, vulnerability in my experience. This vulnerability was like, so we had object, um, let's say document, and document can be accessed from user object, then from user object to organization, and in, in organization there is documents. And doing this path in GraphQL, you, you could have obtained this document if you have access. If you don't have access, you can't obtain it. However, if we will supply ID of the document in the node field, uh, we can actually, we could have actually get this document even without authorization. So uh, yeah, you should check for this too, because uh, this is a really easy way to uh, find vulnerabilities in GraphQL API. Uh, you can use this bash one-liner uh, to check whether your schema has uh, this fields node or nodes or not. So uh, let's uh, wrap up. Uh, what we've learned from today, uh, uh, the, the two things I want uh, you to take with yourself is that mm, first, even, even if you are facing GraphQL API with disabled introspection, uh, it's not the end of the game. You can uh, reverse this uh, or, or probe uh, this schema and uh, in a format that can be used with other tools uh, in the future. Uh, and also uh, two tricks regarding uh, checking authorization vulnerabilities, uh, pay attention to edges as well as nodes and try to access objects directly via node or nodes fields. Uh, also, let's, uh, let's, let's not, mm, not the end of, of the GraphQL researches. Uh, of course, uh, we can do like, if you are interested in GraphQL research, you can like try to contribute in clairvoyance, for example. You can, uh, there is another interesting topic is uh, like traversing GraphQL API automatically. So the main idea is that uh, since GraphQL schema is machine readable, we can write a program which will be uh, going through each object, each field of uh, our GraphQL API, fetch this object and field, store this data, and basically do this for every field it finds. And in the end, we have like, Mm, all the data we can fetch with this authorization token or with these credentials. And by doing this for every role, uh, if we have role-based uh, access control in our system, uh, we can uh, then uh, apply some tools to like diff what is accessible by one user and what is not accessible by the other and so on, and thus find authorization vulnerabilities uh, much more faster because we're not doing manual work of requesting things. Also, there is a batch feature in GraphQL, uh, which basically is you can, in one request, you can supply multiple, um, uh, multiple queries or multiple mutations. And this can lead to all sorts of uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, particularly to array conditions, and we have to check this uh, thoroughly. And also, this can lead, for example, to uh, some issues with brute forcing because brute force protections are 
usually applied to an endpoint. And in GraphQL, we have one endpoint. In, and in, in this one endpoint, we can supply multiple requests at the, at the same time and thus bypass brute force protections. Uh, also, I'd like to thank, uh, all, uh, thank all the people that uh, did some um, things about GraphQL, like uh, there is a very practical guide to flooring GraphQL. I started with it. Like uh, people that uh, did GraphQL Voyager, it really helps in security assessment. Mm, there is a very interesting tool like uh, called GraphQL Pathenum that can help you with finding authorization vulnerabilities similar to node and nodes fields. And uh, also like uh, Icon Sight uh, website for uh, images that uh, you saw in this presentation. And of course, uh, anyone else who contributed in this field in, in one way or another. So that's basically it. Uh, we're almost out of time, I think. So if you have uh, any questions, uh, you can ask them right now and maybe I can provide you an answer. Thank Everyone, you. Everyone, you can write your questions in the Q&A and uh, Nikita will answer these. Nikita, thanks a lot for the super interesting presentation. I personally learned a lot. Uh, you have a question here from Roman Strachmann. Mm -hmm. Let's see that if you can notice it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I see it. Um, I will uh, read it to, to the record, for the recording. Yes, please do. Uh, how does the tool that gets the schema work? Is it some kind of a brute force? Uh, yeah, uh, it's basically uh, brute force uh, combined with uh, leaking information from suggestions and combined and sp speed it up uh, with uh, like supplying multiple fields in the same request. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, any more questions? Any more questions? Nick, oh, we have some spare time. If there's anything else you want to present, uh, I think uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, I'd like to like advertise uh, the tool uh, one more time. <laughs> so like. Uh, uh, you can just go in this repository and uh, check this tool. I've tried to make documentation and description as uh, clear as possible, but if you have any issues, so please create an issue on GitHub. Uh, I see there are more questions. Uh, did you see any blocks for brute force the API? Mm. Ah. So, uh, so if I understood you right, you are asking about um, did somebody block my AP address? <laughs> IP address? Um, no, uh, because actually I'm not doing a lot of requests right now. Uh, what we're doing with this tool, we're doing one request per, I think, uh, per second or even per two seconds. But in in one request we're probing for 4,000 or even more fields. So uh, it's fast, not because of uh, a lot of requests, uh, HTTP requests, but because we can probe a lot of uh, fields in the one request. Uh, the next question is, how you identify the target is using GraphQL? Mm. For me personally, uh, I usually just go to their development page or look at burp traffic and a company, if, if they have public GraphQL API, they have notion about it in the documentation. And if they're using it like not publicly, but for their own purpose, uh, in burp traffic, I will see that uh, application is using GraphQL. But uh, of course there is also uh, other ways to do this like uh, at scale uh usually when you when developers uh, 
build their uh, and deploy their GraphQL endpoint, they deploy it at slash GraphQL location. And if you will supply some request to it and it answers like uh, 200 OK, uh, then it's probably that GraphQL uh, on this server. OK, the next question is, in role-based permission, uh, the node options should be defined separately in order to be secured. Hmm. Uh, do you, uh, could you please uh, uh, elaborate a little bit on this question? Uh, what do you mean by node option? Uh, do you mean like uh, this node, uh, this uh, node nodes field, yeah? Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh, okay, so uh, uh, basically, um, basically you can just remove uh, this field because it's often unnecessary. Uh, so like, uh, yeah, but uh, if you uh, if you really need it uh, in your API, what I recommend you to do is apply authorization checks on field level uh, or like on on object level because um, to the same to one uh, object uh, we can have uh, multiple paths in graphql and uh, it's there is no reason to apply authorization checks on some particular path uh, because they're like in this example, we can if we can access object directly by ID, this will, will not work. But applying authorization checks uh, on the objects themselves uh, will help in this case. Okay. So, any more questions? So I think we will wait like for uh, one minute. If there will be no questions, we will uh, wrap up. Uh, I, I will wrap up, but the conference will continue. Um, so uh, mean uh, meanwhile, I'd like to uh, thank everybody who came uh, to this talk. Uh, I hope uh, it uh, was beneficial for you and you've got something, you've learned something new and it will help you in the future. Oh, one more question. Okay. Um, what was the major discovery aid with this tool? Mm, could you please elaborate a little bit more on this question? Because with... Uh-huh. Uh, what I think... Uh... Huh? Is meaning that what was the major, the most major vulnerability that was uh, discovered using your tool? Ah, uh -huh. uh, actually, uh, I haven't discovered uh, vulnerabilities uh, by using it, and basically this tool is not uh, for searching vulnerabilities, but for increasing attack surface, uh, because like it's it's uh, think of it like um, like nmap. Uh, with nmap, we can uh, you can uh, see that port is open, but uh, in like in simple case, you can't uh, understand whether the, uh, there is vulnerability on ports. So it's, this is the same. You can understand what fields or arguments you have in this GraphQL API, but you can't um, find vulnerabilities with this tool. Uh, so you will find them uh, later when you will analyze this uh, GraphQL API that you've discovered. Uh, maybe some more questions because I think we, we have time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nikki, maybe you can elaborate on uh, what you just uh, mentioned. How mm -hmm. can you utilize the tool to actually find the vulnerabilities? Like if it gives you the schema, what do I need to look for? Ah, if you if you already have a schema, mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah, sure. Uh, authorization vulnerabilities in the first place. So like uh, try to access uh, any data that you can find with different roles and see whether it uh, should be like accessed by a particular role, like uh, any other IDOR vulnerabilities and so on. Uh, you can try to find some injections, but they're not um, happens too much. I think because um, GraphQL have strict validation. For example, you can't supply string for integer field. Uh, so there is lesser chance to get an, get an injection. Um, then uh, try to try some specific uh, GraphQL vulnerabilities like uh, GraphQL batching attack that I mentioned earlier, when you can supply multiple uh, queries in single request, for example, to brute force one time password and or something like this. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Any more questions, guys? For wrapping up? <laughs> uh, what about IoT devices? Um, I have another talk about IoT devices. <laughs> Uh, which I believe uh, is available in Russian, but slides uh, available in English. You can just go to nikitastupin.com. Uh, uh, it's like a personal website and see a link for this talk in, uh, in on the site. Yeah, basically this site is for linking all talks and articles I've made. That's great. So Nikki, thanks a lot for uh, your time and the great talk and the great tool that you just uh, published. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope everybody enjoyed uh, the talk. We will now have a break and we will return around, what's the time now? Around 20 minutes for the next presentation. Mm -hmm. So Nikki, yeah. thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you for organizing this conference. Thank you. Thank you all for attendees to attending. Awesome. Bye. -bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.